oh hello there as part of my cleaning cloth thing i wanted to do an easy sew fax one okay so steam mops i have a fax and i have drawn around the bottom so on this template i need to add the depth of it and i need to add a hem allowance so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use some of these fluffy microfiber cleaning cloths and I'm going to use those and because we know these all he um, fray terribly 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 I'm not going to cut any of the edges I'm going to use the existing seams now if you've managed to catch any of my recent videos I've been doing these cleaning cloths this is a, a vax one made with the special cleaning cloth done on a serger so I know not everybody can get hold of the cleaning cloth, not everybody can get hold of a serger. So I wanted to do one that I know you could get hold of. So I'm going to do one out of fluffy tea cloths type microfiber cleaning cloths. And I'm going to do it with a straight stitch on a sewing machine. So I've drawn around here giving myself two inches of a hem allowance and now I'm going to draw around again probably in a different colour and I'm going to take that in half an inch as well. Now it's up to you how confident you are whether you sew this straight or whether you pin this together. I'm going to sew it straight for convenience and I want to sew around the green line and I want to leave probably a good four inches, maybe five inches as a hem allowance because I'm going to turn this all inside out so I'm going to keep it tidy. So I've got the machine set up and I've done a test sew on a corner so I know it's quite happy and then I'm just going to follow this green line. Now I did do this last night and because I used one cloth, it's, it's really untidy. But when I put it on the machine, it didn't feel as if it was giving my floor enough protection. So that's why I'm using two cloths. And because I'm using two cloths, I can make this nice and tidy. So just following the green line, it's on, going to be on the inside, so that's fine. And I've used a washable marker, so it's going to wash out anyway. So yeah, I'm just coming up to the corner. So if you slow the machine right down, then um, and just ease it round. Now I must. Oh yes, I, I forgot to say. So here we are in London, and guess what? It's raining. I know. We've had May Day and we've had Labour Day and I don't think it's stopped raining since then. Um, so what a shame that is. Alright, I just um, accelerated too fast. This machine's quite, uh, it's quite old and, um, you know, it is, it's a fast machine. So, um, i just got to be a bit more careful. up to the um, start of it now and it's a good idea to mark it with a pin where you want to stop because if once you get sewing it's quite easy just to keep on following this line and there's no problems at all in the world so yeah even mark it with a pen to sew yes only sew up to there because that's an easy mistake to make Lovely. I'm going to do some reverse stitches because this has got some pull on it where we turn it inside out. And there we go. Just get it rolling. And then make sure I've got enough thread to start it off again. So now what we've got is the green line sewn and the blue line to sew. Now I have a piece of elastic here. And what I want to do is I want to sew around the machine 
with the past, um, oh, sorry, the elastic in between the green line and the blue line. I'm just getting a pin actually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to secure the elastic because of <laughs> there's two ways to do this. You can either do the sew and then push the elastic through, probably with a knitting needle or some such thing, or you could go to the trouble of just putting it in there and then sewing around it. Now, if you do that and then you pull it out because of you're just a bit too gung ho, well, if you were me, you would be a bit too gung ho, then it's most infuriating. But to do this, I've placed the elastic in between the two pieces of fabric. I'm going to sew along the blue line and when I come to a corner I'm going to push it in with my thumb and then I'm going to carry on sewing. Now, it's one of those things, it gets easier with time. So, and because we've got um, nice fluffy fabric here, then uh, it's it's got the friction of the fabric to, to help it stay in place. Now, best to avoid putting any tension on the elastic, uh, just because it would just then be naughty. Do you know, that's the same spot. <laughs> so, yeah, and just keeping all the bits of cloth tidy. You don't want to sew over anything. Now, if you find this difficult and you have uh, maybe a fatter bit of cord, what I mean by that is a nice, well, nearly a rope, and then you can feel where it is. So you can then feel it with these four fingers. So I'm just carrying on sewing on the bottom here, and um, I have my thumb still underneath pushing, and see the green line, the blue line's disappeared, <laughs> but um, I know not to sew off the end of the cloth, so. Okay, just taking a moment just to get everything straight, and then um, I'm coming up the top. some more mop covers or I've got to make my own you know they do wear out just with washing and everything so I'm just getting to the stage now where I looked on the internet and yeah you can buy them cheap off eBay and stuff but you don't know what the quality is or you can buy them direct from the manufacturer so no matter what steam mop you have or no matter what mop you have all you do is you take a line drawing from, I actually put mine on a table and then drawed round it uh, just because I didn't want to wiggle it, I didn't want to get it wrong and um, yeah so that's how I did it. I'm not very good at threading the needle when the camera's on. I know I've done it once already this sew and in my last sew I had to do it a couple of times. Uh, it. <sighs> I know, I think I might need to pause the camera, which I don't like to do because I don't like you to think that I switch the camera off and then I do something really clever and then I don't tell you about it. So, okay, sorry about that. Do you know, I can't, well, I can't thread a needle. Um, I can, but yeah, it's just one of those foibles. So, I'm just literally, I did a couple of stitches before just to get it going and um, I'm now just coming up to the end where I finished sewing the green stitches. So. Okay. Oh, that 
does explain a lot actually. Um, this machine, like all machines, when the bobbin runs out, it usually breaks the thread. And the last bit of the bobbin, uh, I'm terrible for it. I always sort of thread it the wrong way, so. Okay, so I've got the pin, got the two bits of elastic, turning it all inside out now. So, pushing my corners out as I go. Lovely. So now what I've got a nice bobbly bit, so it's all going to sit nicely and um, probably maybe a bit too much bobbly bits. And, oh, that looks better. <laughs> yes, push the corners out, okay, and then it will be fine. <laughs> so we've got this elastic and I can pull it taut and then it will cup round my vacs. So I do have a toggle as well, or you could just use a knot. Um, I'm gonna take the toggle off the one I've got here. This is the one I made yesterday with a single one, which was terribly untidy. That's not really a worry though, is it? If it's, if it's just for emergency use or your own use. Um, what is a worry though is if it's not thick enough so that it scratches your wood floors or or your stone floors so with these toggles oh can you see okay you literally just push the elastic through and then I'm going to pull it all through and then you tighten the knot so that's all ready to go um, I hope you've enjoyed the video I hope you found it instructive I'm Fiona from Weekly Sewing Bee and I do daily videos and I do run along a theme at the minute um, these are a sort of batch of cleaning cloth type things I know that sounds really uneventful but um, I was so delighted to find this in the shops um, that I thought well yes somebody else might be interested in that so there we go okay please like please subscribe and please share thanks ever so much Mm-hmm. <clears throat>